Hey everyone, this is Nitro with the major update for June released. It came with five new 3Cs added and so I thought I would do an update to my 3C tier list. So first of all, I should mention of these five 3Cs, I've already covered two of them in hero build videos. So I've already covered Ares' 3C and Maya's 3C. So in this video, I am going to go into detail about Hein, Ledin, and Rene's 3Cs. But uh, I'll also, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to update this tier list. And then after that, I'm going to go into the details of those three, three Cs so that you know exactly what they do. All right, so first things first, a few adjustments to this list. First of all, Juggler used to be in top tier for PvP and PvE. I've moved him down to the PvP only section because this is related only to his 3C, right? And his 3C is, you can basically say that it's only good for PvP, effectively, right? If you use Juggler for PvE content, you'd have him bring Great Dragon Barrier, um, you'd have him bring Triton, and you'd probably have him bring Faction Buff or B-Shock. So in that sense, you don't bring his 3C, and thus, the 3C itself is only good for PvP. Next, Sumeri. I was t recommended to put Sumeri in the good for PvP and PvE section because apparently Sumeri's skill, <coughs> excuse me, apparently Sumeri's 3C is actually decent in both situations. So that's another adjustment that I've made here. After all, Sumeri is a tank, and if you do have Sumeri built up, she can be used as a decent tank for PvE content, right? So, and ultimately her 3C has a 5 turn cooldown, so it is definitely usable for PvE content as a result, right? The big drawback of using it for PvE content is that it only lasts 2 turns, but I'm sure you can kind of balance that out by bringing another tanking skill. Like, uh, what is her other tanking skill? I think it's phoenix dance right so if you bring both of those tank tanking skills let's say the three costs 3c her two costs phoenix dance and then you can bring a one point skill and she should be okay that way so with those changes covered let's go into the five new 3c's and put them on the tier list so first is up is Ares, and for Ares, I would say his 3C continues to be useful for both PvP and PvE content, okay? The primary reason for this is because Ares has... Actually, Ares has three attack, single target strike skills. I should mention this as well, okay? He has Roar, he has Lightning, and he also has Majestic Charge. So there may be situations and maps where you choose to bring all three of them. But at the same time, keep in mind that lightning, as long as you kill a target, you can use lightning again. So if that's the case, right, you can choose to bring any other two skills instead of bringing three attack skills. Because you can assume that lightning will, on, will constantly refresh and allow you to use it. So that's why his 3C, which is a mobility buff, can be used in PvE content. It's... It's definitely an interesting situation uh, because depending on the depending on what you need to do with Ares, you may choose to bring all three single target strike skills, but there may be also other maps where you bring his 3C. So I'll place him in the top tier section as a result. In the case of Hein, inherently, Hein has three mobility. Okay, and in this, in with Apex Arena constantly changing towards a high mobility party. Hein just doesn't work for PvP, you know. Can you use him at lower tiers? Of course, right? If you're trying to just get if you're simply trying to get into let's say gold 30 and you're gonna quit there, you can probably use Hein in your PvP party, honestly speaking. But for anyone who's aiming for like Langrissa rank or so on, I would say Hein does not work. So in that sense, you know, I would put him in the good for PV I would put him in the PvE only section just because of him in general not being usable for PvP. So next up is Ledin. So Ledin's 3C is kind of interesting. It pretty much teleports the enemy to him and starts combat, 
right? So it's like a it's like a combination of burning sun with divine guard. So in that sense, due to it having multi due to its unique effects, I feel like his 3C is good for both PvP and PvE. Okay. You're not going to use it for every single map, but there will be maps where you choose to use it instead of Divine Guard, for example, or whatever. So that's why he goes up into the good for PvP and PvE section for his 3C. Maya pretty much falls under the same category because in PvP, she's m primarily meant to be a backup character, like uh, for the play during, let's say, the playoff rounds, you may choose to have Maya in a backup role and rotate her in whenever you see, let's say, a demon class enemy. So that's why Maya falls in the good for PvP and PvE category. You know, she's not meant to be a primary character in your Apex 15, but she can be used as a backup one. And Rene, Rene's 3C is an AoE three line attack, right? Inherently, these AoE three line attacks are PvP only skills because they have long cooldowns and Rene, frankly speaking, if you're going to use Rene for, um, sorry, if you're going to use Rene for PvE content, you'd be better off bringing, let's say, Rene Annihilation is a must, a way to apply multiple debuffs. So, you know, line attacks with preferably shorter cooldowns than her 3C, right? So can the 3C be used in PvE content? Of course, most skills can be used for PvE content in the first place, but if you had to choose, I would say Rene probably won't bring her 3C, which is a 5 turn cooldown, and should instead choose to bring, let's say, Calamity Throw, if you need to apply debuffs, because Calamity Throw has a two, 3 turn cooldown, right? All this is kind of dependent, like in the first place, let's say you have someone else to apply debuffs so that Rene can use Rene Annihilation, then you may choose to change up the skill selection and whatnot. So I've put her in the PvP only section, and in a lot of ways, it is a top tier for PvP skill, but uh, yeah, that's something to just keep in mind. Um, finally, one last adjustment I would say is for Yusuke. Yusuke is interesting, okay? If you have a faction buff for Yusuke, he can actually use his 3C for PvE content. This assumes that he's going to one-shot targets though, right? Because if Yusuke is getting faction buffed, he can bring both Spirit Gun and the Black Spirit Gun, right? And both of these skills, as long as Yusuke kills something, the cooldown is reduced down to one turn. In other words, he can rotate endlessly between Black Spirit Gun and Spirit Gun. So as long as it's a faction buff, he can keep doing that. So you can say that that single target strike skill is good for PvP and PvE as a result. So that's just one final adjustment that I've made one final modification keep in mind though that as a single target damage dealer yusuke will have to refresh spiritual outbreak whenever he can right so he's not like let's say a lot of other single target strikers that can endlessly attack every single turn he has a he has a few downtime turns just a important thing to note okay but nonetheless you know i I have been using Yusuke for, let's say, Guild Wars, <laughs> and with Spirit Gun, Black Spirit Gun, and Spiritual Outbreak, he just keeps one-shotting enemy after enemy, so it is what it is. So I've placed them up there for good for PvP and PvE, you know, I can imagine Yusuke being useful for, let's say, Time Rift, those kind of maps. I think Yusuke would really struggle, though, for, like, fights where you're fighting against a boss character that he can't kill, such as, let's say, Thunder Dragon, you know, uh, such as... You know, Ancient Beckoning, Eternal Temple, those kind of fights, I can't recommend Yusuke. But the more basic fights, I can see you using them. Alright, so with the tier list now updated, I'm now going to move on to talk about the three skills in great detail. So let's start by covering Heinz 3C, Ultimate Magister. It's a cost of three, just like any other 3C cooldown of 5, and a range and span of only 2. However, for each stack of gained knowledge that Hein has, 
gained knowledge is Heinz Talent, where at the end of every turn he gets increased int. Okay. So for each stack of gained knowledge that Hein has, the range and span of this skill are increased by one, and the maximum overall range and span of this ability are capped at four. So other than that, the magic damage it deals is 0.2 times AoE damage to all enemies within range, and all tiles within the AoE range of this skill gain Runic Ruins, which lasts two turns. Okay. So it's a, I guess, tile effect AoE attack. And the runic ruin effect is that when each unit moves onto this tile, inflicts mobility minus two on the enemy, and it lasts one turn. So if they get affected by mobility minus two, these characters cannot guard. And as a result, this skill could be useful in PvE content because it can make all the Lancer tanks unable to guard, right? In addition, just a mobility reduction can help you in dealing with enemies in general. So as for why Hein does not work well in PvE or sorry, in PvP content, it's simple. Okay, in order for this skill to get its maximum range, you need to wait two turns. So, in other words, you can't really use this 3C skill until turn three on Hein. Yes, at that point, this skill will has four range, four AOE blast radius, but having to wait that long is a major issue. Put it another way, Ultimate Magister on the third turn is very similar to let's say Lana tossing a black hole, right? So due to that long wait, uh, Hein just does not work well as a result overall. Yeah. Generally speaking, in PvP content, you're looking to push the enemy aggressively and with as many AoEs as possible. If you have to wait this long, it's just not a good thing in general. So this example is of the SSSS final trial that was occurring on the first week of May 2020, which was against the Princess Alliance. So in this example, the player is using a princess party, and Luna plus Lyphany have been able to take out Narm and Claret thus far. So at this point, the remaining enemies are Hein, Shafaniel, and Yulia. Both all of three, sorry, Yulia, Shafaniel, and Emilia. And all three of these characters only have three mobility. So at this point, now that all the fast characters have been eliminated, Hein now moves forward and is going to toss out his 3C skill. So, there it goes, and we see it apply map effects on the range that it has access to. So since this was just the second turn, not the third turn, and Hein only had one b uh, talent buff, it only had three range with a three AoE, right? So if it, had, if, it w if you could have waited one more turn, it would have four range, right? Which would also hit Shafaniel. But you know, this is just one of those limitations of this skill, right? It only becomes stronger the longer the battle takes. In any case though, so now that that's been used, right? The enemies are basically slowed if they try to move through this, right? So Shafaniel can move two tiles. We just saw that uh, a few tiles back. If I move back a little, sorry, let me just jump a little bit back here. So Yulia herself can only move one, okay? But, and Shafaniel is stuck at two mobility because she is trying to move. Once she moves onto one of these tiles, she's going to lose two of her mobility right there. So she can only move two, while Yulia, being already on one of these tiles, loses two mobility right away and can only move one tile as a result. So the map terrain effects really, really help in preventing the enemies from reaching your party, right? So at this point, all three of these characters are basically sitting ducks, right? And I'm not going to play out the rest of this fight, but long story short, Yulia and Lyphany who can attack and retreat will just keep kiting until they're both killed. The second example will be of Leden's 3C. So Leden's 3C is called Righteous Duel. It has three cost again, the cooldown is four, and it has a range of three targeting a single target. Okay? It has multiple effects. First of all, the passive effect is that you guard adjacent allies against all attacks, just like, let's say, Divine Guard or any other guard skill. Its active effect targets an enemy. So 
you have to target an enemy from three tiles of you, and it will teleport that character adjacent to let it. The guard range is then increased to two, and the thing here is this guard range increase lasts for four turns and cannot be dispelled. Leaden also gains Almighty Guard. Okay, So Almighty Guard has the same effect of the Divine Guard pretty much. Attack is replaced by the defense plus magic defense times one. And the guard range increases to two. This effect lasts four turns and it also cannot be dispelled. Finally, Leaden then attacks the target for 1.2 times physical damage. And after combat, you gain Righteous Duel, where enemies within one square of you are inflicted with mobility minus three and cannot guard. That Righteous Duel lasts two turns. So lots of effects on this skill, right? Um, it's basically a combination of Divine Guard with Burning Sun, although you don't heal, and instead you make it so that enemies can't move and cannot guard. So when is it great? Well, when you can actually get in range to use it, long story short. Very often, let's say Lenin is fighting against cavalry characters, and in those cases, you're going to need regular Divine Guard, right? Because you won't be able to get into range to use Stretch's Duel on them. But against other enemies, such as, uh, you know, you'll be able to teleport them to you and activate Divine Guard, and then they can't escape. So you can use this especially, let's say, against, I don't know, melee characters, for example, or sorry, ranged characters, for example. Force ranged characters in the town next to Ledin, they're forced to melee attack him as well if they survive, and they'll kill themselves. So this is a, vi this is a skill that is useful for both PvP and PvE. And most importantly, this skill can't be dispelled, right? One of the major issues Ledin has been having on quite a few maps is that the Divine Guard uh, gets dispelled. Let in with Righteous Duel, you can't lose it. You know? And you can even choose to run, let's say, Let in with you know, Divine Guard, Righteous Duel, and a one point skill, like Light Reflect, right? So that assumes you have someone to faction buff up your Let in, but if you run something like that, you know, Let in can maintain the guard skill, like literally permanently, which is really, really powerful. So, However, there are indeed a few limitations. The first major limitation is you cannot use this skill on characters who are immune to displacement effects. So, for example, Slepnir, one of the bosses, right, of Ancient Beckoning. So characters like Slepnir, well, characters in Ancient Beckoning, characters in Eternal Temple, and let's say dragons, all are immune to displacement effect. So when you try to use... Uh, this skill on them, let's see what happens. Okay. So, Ledin activates Righteous Duel, right? It triggers, you get the buffs, but the enemy is not teleported to you. And because the enemy is not teleported to you, no combat occurs. Now, if you use Righteous Duel next to the enemy in this case, the combat will occur. So you won't teleport them, but you'll activate the Vanguard and then you'll fight them. So this is just something that's useful to know about this skill, right? Because it is a vulnerability. So other than that weakness, let's demonstrate Just Duel being used in an Apex Arena match, okay? So right here, young Jessica got to act again because of her exclusive helmet. And so she was able to move forward two more tiles to launch a cleanse attack at long range to do damage to the enemy. Okay. So we see here that player one has Emilia, Ledin, Bernhard, right? Waller and Liana. Whereas player two has a much more traditional kind of party, much more meta party with Mystery Knight, uh, Young Jessica, Landius, Deedlit, and Waller. So now, Just Duel is used by Ledin to teleport Young Jessica next to Ledin. At this point though, the easy counter for player 2 is Tactical Retreat to pull young Jessica back to safety. So now, Deedlit moves forward, act again, and strikes. 
And the key point there is, look at that. Deedlit killed herself into Ledin. So let's just go back a little and show that one more time as to why that happened. First of all, part of it is the crystal molders, right? Crystal molders do damage reflection. The other part of it is this Ledin is running the other damage reflection item, drop near, right? So that's leading to a massive amount of damage reflection and it actually caused Deedlit to kill herself into this Ledin. And then tactical retreat is used to teleport this lead into safety. And then with him in safety, you know, the act again is used to reactivate him and start moving him up again into the battlefield. So young Jessica is doing her long range single target strikes, not really having any luck killing any of these tanks though. Especially not with double healer. So now, Lenin activates faction buff. So you can see very clearly this is a ridiculously crazy tank push strategy. Three tanks, two healers more or less. Although I suppose Bernhardt isn't really a tank in this situation. Running uh, shield, shield bash and so on. So Crystal Molder and Drop Near Reflection now wipes out young Jessica when she tries to attack. And then now, the Vine Guard counterattack. Ledin, due to having killed young Jessica and having her having his exclusive, revives from that fight. And at that point, player two just gives up and surrenders. So very unique build Ledin in this kind of situation, right? Having the having the drop near and crystal molders for double damage reflection to counterattack against any ranged strikers. And then if they ever melee attack him, he has the Divine Guard to do crazy amounts of counterattack damage, right? And finally, due to having the Trial of Bravery, he can revive at will. So not a very common build version of Ledin at all, but clearly, this works. <laughs> finally, let's cover Rene's 3C, which is called Pattern Manor. So cost of 3, cooldown of 5, range of 6, and a span of 3 lines. So this one is a magic attack which deals 0.3 times AoE damage to all enemies along 3 lines in front of her and knocks them back one tile. Enemies hit receive a 30% reduction to the higher value of their defense or magic defense value uh, stat. And this debuff lasts 2 turns. Okay. Why is this skill so good? Well, first of all, Keep in mind that Rene's talent applies two debuffs, two random debuffs on the enemies, right? Combined with this awakening skill, it means Rene will apply three debuffs on the enemies. Second of all, attacking three lines in front of her at six range is just an amazing range for an AoE attack skill. So this skill basically makes Rene a very, very powerful AoE attacker for PvP. She's much more traditional uh, in this sense than let's say Hein is who needs more turns to activate the full power of his 3C. But you know, Rene is traditional, which is good, and because the Apex Arena fourth season is inclined towards AoE teams and long range AoE teams, this 3C makes Rene very, very good on any team in general. And being able to debuff them three times is huge because actually her debuffs have a very very high chance of applying cannot be healed on enemies. So in this particular example, player one has both Lifany and Rene, as you see here, and player two also has Rene. So things start with Lifany using Acid Burn here, and then Lifany retreats. Next, Rene tosses out her 3C Pattern Matter to hit both 
Luna, and Liffany at Extreme Rage. Also worth noting is that Rene was actually applied with Cannot Be Healed from Liffany, right? So right now, this whole party has Cannot Be Healed from Liffany, although it's getting removed. Now, Player 1's Rene now comes in and begins by launching Calamity Throw rather than Pattern Manor. And you can see that Calamity Throw applied Cannot Be Healed and Poison, Fixed Damage Poison, onto the other Rene. So now Rene moves up some more, launches out another 3C, Pattern Matter, knocking all these enemies back and killing off the other player's Rene right there. So the double AoE of Calamity Throw followed by Pattern Matter crushed Player 2's Rene to start. And then the assault continues with, you know, Deedlet jumping in, here attacking and finishing Juggler in one shot. And with Juggler down, this battle is now 5v3, where player 2 has two healers in Zerida. So the battle right there is all but over. So I'm just going to end this video here then. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video useful to you. And on that note, Nitro out.